Hi everyone, I'm Emily Bierman and welcome to JCCC Voices. Today we're in the Healthcare Simulation Center with Kathy Carver. In 2008, Johnson County Community College opened a new healthcare simulation center, a 2,000 square foot space with the look, feel, and equipment of four general medical surgery rooms and a large suite that can function as an operating room, labor delivery room, emergency room, and multi-bed recovery room. Each year, more than 60 students prepare for nursing careers in the Healthcare Simulation Center under the guidance of the college's nursing faculty. One of the faculty members who played an instrumental part in the creation of the center is Kathy Carver. The holder of the college's first endowed professorship, Kathy is the Zamorowski Family Endowed Professor of Nursing and Medical Simulation at JCCC. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you very much. You bet. Well, so tell me a little bit about how this facility, which is pretty amazing, mm -hmm. got started here mm -hmm. at JCCC. Well, I, I have to just uh, say that it was many people that have come together to really create this space. Um, this is sort of learning at its, at, at its best. Uh, we created the space just for that reason. And even though it looks like a hospital, it feels like a hospital to the students, we created different um, you know, pieces that really make this a good environment to learn for both um, the students, but also for faculty to teach in and to be able to create the moment for that student. So that's been exciting. So we started in 2006 uh, with several funds uh, from the state of Kansas, uh, they were looking at the nursing shortage. And simulation was thought to be a way to be able to create um, more learning opportunities for students so they could be better prepared for the future of healthcare. Mm -hmm. And so with that funding from the state, but also our community, we had multiple uh, donors and people that were enthusiastic with this approach. They've all come together to create this space. Well, so when we say simulation, mm -hmm. tell me exactly what that means in mm -hmm. a healthcare environment. Well, thank you for asking. And I do think people um, look at simulation as maybe an unknown. But I will tell you, everybody uses simulation every day. Uh, when we're on playing our Xbox games or our video games or something, we are engaging in a very active way in an environment that maybe we would like to be in. So the simulation here is something very similar, but instead of just using a computer as your entry into that world, you're actually able to walk in, have the physical space, and to create that learning moment for the students. Mm -hmm. So. They take care of patients. Our patients are verbalized their needs. Their, um, if they're in pain or if they're having difficulty breathing, and the students respond. Mm -hmm. So really, we're kind of dealing with big robots here, in a way. We are dealing with very sophisticated mm -hmm. simulators in the sense that they breathe, they will talk, they can have react to oxygen, to medications, and that is all with that internal programming and modeling within that uh, the software within the <laughs> simulator actual um, components. So you see the mannequins, but behind the scene are usually two laptops and even more equipment to actually drive the motion and the movement of the eyes uh, and the breathing to create that simulated response. So you mentioned that creates a moment for the, stu mm -hmm. for the students, mm -hmm. so they can actually work with the patient, respond to the patient, and see the patient responding to what they are able to do. And how does that affect also how the teachers interact with the students? It really provides a way for us, instead of leading the students to what they need to do, we can stay in the background. We do it by giving the students the cues or the subtle comments to help direct them. If they don't decide that I'm having, you know, maybe needing something for pain or if something needs to be done, I'll, I'll complain maybe in a different way. I'll verbalize it a different way. Maybe the student will respond or recognize that that may be something they need to think about doing. So we can create that learning um, 
in tune to where the student is. We have objectives, but my goal is to understand where the student is. And when I see them at the patient bedside, then I can respond to their interactions and help them to understand and to move them to the objective that we would like for them to be able to understand. Mm -hmm. And obviously every simulation is unique as every patient is unique and it is driven by the student's ability to respond to that patient. Exactly. We have an idea of what we think we what we're going to say or do, but again, we're going to respond to whatever the students. And if the students maybe are having, are struggling or having a little bit difficulty, then we help redirect by our comments. And maybe sometimes we may even bring in a family member that will help support whatever uh, learning objective, if that would help give them a little bit more information mm -hmm. to be able to make the right decision. So, little role so this really is about um, understanding and utilizing their critical thinking. So this is where it's, it really empowers the student to uh, see what the outcome is. So if they put on some oxygen but it, maybe they're not doing it in the best mode or best practice, mm -hmm. then if they come back and do it again and they see a better response, that's what we want them to take home. Tell me what programs here at the college use mm -hmm. the Simulation Center. Well, I will tell you, um, it initiated with our nursing program, but again, we have healthcare programs for our respiratory care students and for our emergency medical students as well. So we provide simulation that's read in any of those classes here on campus. I see. And how do you share what you're doing here with the healthcare community? Do you have ongoing partnerships? in the community with those organizations? Well, initially, uh, we, we had the simulators, uh, and so when the hospitals were starting to get interested, we would load up our simulators and put them in our vans and travel to wherever they were you know, asking us to come to, and we, I would take some faculty, I would take my team, the team, and we would go in and actually work with the faculty or the educators in the hospitals so that we could really work uh, directly with the staff and clinical, um, you know, the clinical groups there. So, and what I need to share with you though is that they've now really embraced simulation. So no longer are we doing as much transporting, but uh, they have now their own simulators and area for their, their own simulation setup in their clinical sites, so. That's great. Yeah, it has been very good. It's been a really good partnership. Well, so tell me a little bit about the different models of simulators that you mm -hmm. have here. You not only have adults. No. Uh, uh, again, Mel was our original one. He came from Sarasota, Florida, so we gave him uh, the name Mel, and he came from Mel Cunningham, who was the librarian at the time as the college. And what was interesting is that the librarians were helping support our initial adventure into buying that first simulator. So that's how that the Mel simulator start, got started here at the college. But now we have, um, we have actually seven adults. We have two birthing moms. We have three five-year-olds. Uh -huh. And we also have a one-year-old. And then we have three brand new babies. So we have three newborns. It's a big family over we here. We do. We have to keep track of them. So we <laughs> We use them uh, constantly uh, between the three programs. We're, we're always, somebody's always being used. So I, I've really enjoyed how uh, other faculty and programs have really embraced the use of simulation. That's great. So how do the students respond to this? When they enter the program, mm -hmm. I assume they know that this is available. How do they work with, mm -hmm. with the simulators? Well, they're, initial response, Emily, just like anything new in terms of learning, is that they're always a little skeptical. They'll come in, they'll say, this is pretty scary, I'm not sure if I can, you know, look around, I have all these cameras or I have all of the, you know, equipment, uh, and this is very high fidelity. I mean, these are the pumps, we use the actual Cerner computers uh, software on our, in our lab, so we build their own patient charts, they're having to access patient information just like they would in our healthcare settings, and so a lot of that realism makes it a little overwhelming, especially for the brand new students. But once they're here, 
they walk away and say, gosh, I can do this. And what has been very empowering is that they really build their confidence. Because what our goal here is to bridge classroom to our clinical settings. We want to provide our students the opportunity to have gone through our, the simulation area to really build those skills so that when they're in that patient room, they provide the best care available and that they've had the opportunity to do it here first. And so that is just a win-win situation for everybody. Um, so the students really build that confidence and the anxiety sort of goes away. Their simulation here is really about learning. We don't use it particularly for any kind of evaluation process. Uh, we really focus and use a lot of our energy. So we have faculty that are working in groups of two or three students. Uh, and this is, you know, such a powerful time when we can really create sort of almost that one-on-one -on -one learning. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's something they really don't get anyplace else. So when they enter the hospital room mm -hmm. on a clinical, mm -hmm. they really do feel more comfortable. They feel like they've got experience doing this. For people watching out there, what percentage of JCCC graduates would you say are, are out in the field in our community right now? Oh, I, um, I would say, you know, at least 90% um, go directly into some direct RN position. Mm -hmm. Somewhere locally. In, locally, yeah. And we always have some that are young and will travel off, but the majority are right here. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that our age uh, for our students has a very broad range. So we take the students, you know, the traditional student, but we have, you know, uh, students that are coming back for second degrees or they've been doing another career and they find for whatever reason that healthcare sort of gives them a new outlook and a new opportunity. And so we have students of all ages. And so, you know, we really can uh, provide excellent care for all of our patients here in the community. That's wonderful. What else can you tell us? Is there anything else we haven't touched on you'd like to talk about? I want to, again, just sort of reiterate about how much simulation has brought the different schools within healthcare together where we it's sort of now we have a common platform that we all can talk about in terms of our curriculums uh, it's brought our, brought us closer with our clinical agencies and facilities because uh, we can create some of that same uh, opportunities to share back and forth and so that really has been exciting for me to see and so the networking we've become very much a um, in, you know, sort of unified with creating our, our opportunity. And, and our workforce is, I think, that much better because of how much we've been able to work together and learn from this. It's a great team effort. It is. Well, thank you, Kathy Carver. Okay, thank you. And thanks to all of you out there for watching JCCC Voices today from the Healthcare Simulation Center at Johnson County Community College. I'm Emily Bierman. <laughs>